Hey folks, over the course of the last year, we've been riding Yamaha's 2022 Tracer 9 GT. Now, if you remember, the Tracer 9 GT was an all new middleweight sport touring bike from the Tuning Fork brand that they introduced for the 2021 model year. Now we've reported on the performance capability of this 2022 Tracer 9 GT on MotorcyclistOnline.com and in video content that lives here on the Motorcyclist Mag YouTube channel. Now, having ridden this bike for nearly a year and having logged almost 4,000 miles on this motorcycle, we wanted to talk about what it's like to live with day in and day out. I know when I originally reviewed this bike, there was a couple of hiccups on this motorcycle that I didn't really like. Well, fast forward to now, and having lived with this motorcycle for that type of duration, those bugaboos don't really irk me anymore, and there's some things that I've really come to enjoy about this Tracer 9 GT. Let's begin with its size in overall proportions. What I really like about this middleweight sport touring bike from Yamaha is just its size. Because it's a sport touring bike, you can actually use it for some utilitary function. It has OE hard cases. You can load things in the bag. You don't need to wear a backpack. You don't need to wear a fanny pack. And the bags are capable of swallowing nearly eight gallons of goodies on each side. Yet even with those hard case luggage on this motorcycle, it's still very nimble. It's very narrow. It's easy to slice your way through traffic. Traffic's a real bear here in Southern California. And sometimes when you're riding bigger, touring bikes and cruisers, they can be a real handful to, to, to slide in and out of traffic, not with this Tracer 9 GT. Yeah, it weighs just over 500 pounds with a full five gallons of fuel, but you'd be surprised at how nimble and how responsive and how agile this sport touring bike is. I really like its proportions and how easy it is to get in and out of traffic. It really fits my Southern California lifestyle. Ergonomics on this bike. I love the ergonomics on this bike. The seat is nice and plush. It's broad. You can easily raise or lower the seat height very easily without any tools. Yamaha made a nice little cam system. So if you're a height challenge rider, you can put the seat in a lower position. I, standing at six foot tall, I like the tall position. It is very comfortable. I also like the ability to adjust the rider foot pegs. That was a feature that we used to see on sport bikes many years ago. They kind of went away from that, but I, I'm happy that Yamaha still has that. I like the foot pegs in the low position that reduces the amount of knee contortions I have when I'm riding this bike, and it just gives me a real comfortable ride. I also like the handlebar. It's nice and wide. It's nice and upright. You can adjust the positioning of the handlebar uh, based on your preference. And it's just a really accommodating ergonomics package. I also like the windscreen. It doesn't allow for electronic adjustment. The adjustment is just manual toolless with just a lever. You pull it and you push that windscreen up or down really easy to use. I like how tall the windscreen is in its high position. It does a good job of moving the turbulent air over my head and really delivers to me to where I need to go in a comfortable and quiet manner. I also like the OE fitted plastic hand guards. They do a marvelous job of keeping your hands warm in chilly weather. That along with the 10 way adjustable electronic heated grips, 10 levels of adjustability. I love it. I'm a wimp when it gets cold out and it's nice to put those heated grips, grips on level 10. And with the wind deflection of the hand guards, you are guaranteed to have a nice cozy ride even when the mercury is, is dropped. Other things I really like about this motorcycle, of course, is the engine. This 890 cc i3 is just awesome. It has gobs of torque over 50 pound feet of torque from as low as 2,500 RPM, right around 104, 105 ponies at the business end of the Bridgestone 180 series sport terrain tire. This bike has a lot of get up and go. It also sounds cool that 
electronic quick shifter is a real nice feature. I love electronic quick shifters. You don't have to use the clutch when you're up shifting. You don't have to use the clutch when you're down shifting. It just makes for a much more entertaining experience, especially with the torquey punch of this inline three. Now what's really neat about this motorcycle is its elevated maintenance intervals. Yamaha Motor recommends engine oil changes every 6,000 miles, engine oil filter changes every 12,000 miles, along with spark plugs and an air filter. Valve adjustment intervals are spaced out to 24,000 miles. So this motorcycle goes quite a lot of miles with not a lot of maintenance. Like I said before, we logged nearly 4,000 miles. The only really hiccup we had with this motorcycle was a flat tire. We got a flat tire, we got a nail in the 180 series Bridgestone tire. Not a big deal because this bike has a center stand, popped it on the center stand, took the wheel off, put a new tire on. We were back in business in just a couple hours. Now, $15,000 is a lot of money for this motorcycle, especially considering that the outgoing FJ09 only cost around 10 grand. But of course, that then didn't, didn't come with the OE luggage, which is another $1,500 more, which would put at, it at right around 11,500. But for the added price, you get a lot of accoutrement. I really like the heated grips. I like the cruise control, although it is a little bit annoying that you can only engage cruise control in fifth and sixth gears. Fourth gear too, if you're below that gear, those gears, it won't actually engage. It would be nice if you could engage cruise control in any gear because sometimes you're just cruising at low speeds through town and you want to do that. I also like the function of the LED headlights. I think it's cool that Yamaha comes with cornering LEDs as an OE feature. Realistically, we rode this motorcycle after dark for probably hundreds and hundreds of miles and the OE cornering headlamps just don't do a very good job of throwing light into the corner when you're riding. We've ridden other motorcycles that have much better cornering headlight function. It'd be really nice if Yamaha revisited that application for 2023 and beyond. Now, fuel economy wise, we love riding fast and we love riding fast on an entertaining motorcycle like this Tracer 9 GT. We only averaged around 32 miles per gallon, but again, this engine is so peppy and so fun to, to, to ride and has such cool engine and exhaust notes. You're gonna find it really easy to rev this thing out and really let her eat. But still, with its five gallon capacity fuel tank, you still have some decent range. Of course, bigger fuel tanks are always better in my book, especially for a sport touring bike, but we can live with the five gallon fuel tank. Overall, after riding this bike nearly 4,000 miles, I really like this Tracer 9 GT. It really grew on me. Again, I really like the packaging. I like that you can have a sport touring bike that has capability that doesn't take up a lot of room in your garage. I like that it has a real peppy and real fun loving engine, has decent handling. The KYB semi-active suspension, I think that's neat that Yamaha's adding these kind of features to the bike. Realistically, yeah, it's nice not having to adjust damping adjusters, but the actual function of the semi-active suspension, it's kind of meh. We've ridden other bikes with semi-active suspension that performed better, but that's not saying that this thing doesn't handle good. Around town, it handles real nicely. It soaks up the bumps really well, but when you're getting some in the corners on a favorite curvy road like Palomar Mountain Road, this bike, has a tendency to get a little bit unglued, but I can certainly live with it based on its day-to-day -day capability. Now for 15 grand, would I pony up my $15,000 for this motorcycle? Well, initially I thought it was just way too expensive for the features that it brings to the table, but now after riding it for nearly a year, I like it. I like that it has good traction control, I like that it has wheelie control integrated. I like Yamaha's updated D mode system with its APSG throttle tube setup that they originally unveiled on the 2020 YZF R1 and R1M. Those features just make for a more lovable 
and easy riding bike. And for $15,000, if you're looking for a motorcycle that can do a whole heck of a lot, this thing has bags, you can go place on this thing, yet it's still small, it's still easy to park, and it won't break the bank in terms of maintenance. I think this $15,000 Tracer 9 GT bike from Yamaha is pretty good. I really like it. I'm sad that it has to go back to Yamaha Motor. All right, folks, that's a wrap from our long-term review of Yamaha's 2022 Tracer 9 GT. As usual, please surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where our vast array of performance motorcycle reviews lives. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs it down if you didn't, because we love hearing from all of the naysayers out there. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for riding with us.